Well, uh, today, now I, you don't have to turn there, but I want to uh, just, uh, I want to look at several different scriptures here. But first of all, the scripture <clears throat> found in Psalms 27 says, Some trust in chariots, <coughs> and some trust in horses, but we remember the Lord. Amen. I believe that that's what we need today. Now, we some trust in the government, some trust in money, some trust in everything else, but we need to remember the Lord Jesus Christ and what he did on Calvary's cross for our sins. Let us go to the Lord in prayer. Almighty God, how we thank you and praise you for this day. And I pray that you'll speak through this, your servant, the words that you'd have me speak. And I pray that if there's one here that has never opened up their heart and invited the Lord Jesus Christ to come in, that today would be that day. And I pray too for Christians that we might truly live and be what you expect us to be, Lord. I know none of us are perfect, we all fall short, but yet, we're to strive to be the kind of Christian that you want us to be. Lord God, this morning, we have so many wonderful things to be thankful for. We certainly thank you for our country. We thank you, Lord God, for the men and women who have sacrificed their all to provide for us the freedom that we have today. So, Lord, <clears throat> we thank you and we praise you for that. I pray, Lord God, that you'll continue to bless us, bless our church, bless us in its individuals. And we pray and we ask all this in Jesus' name and for his sake, amen. amen. Well, I think we perhaps have forgotten, forgotten our past. You know, our neighbors to the north up in Canada, the French came there seeking gold to the south of us, Mexico, and the people came there, the Spanish came there seeking gold. But the people who came to the United States came here seeking God. That's right. And for some reason or another, I think we have forgotten that. You know, it, it's interesting to look sometimes. You know, I, I'm, I was a history major in college. And, uh, you know, sometimes I look back and see some or remember some of those things that, that we were taught. And it's interesting to look into the different charters of the states, the 13 original colonies that formed this country in which we are part of, you see. Uh, you know, uh, for instance, in Maryland, their charter set was to extend the Christian gospel. Hmm. Delaware, theirs was to propagate the gospel of the Lord Jesus Christ. <laughs> I like what Connecticut, theirs was. To preserve the purity of the gospel of the Lord Jesus Christ. Boy, isn't that great. That's wonderful. By the way, you know, the nation Israel, theirs is uh, in God we trust and the united states of america has on its coins in different places in god we trust <laughs> it's interesting but few nations listen few nations have had the history like ours you know over over 200 years now 250 or so we we've been a bright shining light in the world people want to come to the united states We've been the launch pad to take the gospel too to the ends of the earth. But we've forgotten what we're to do and what we're all about. You know, uh, we've forgotten what Daniel had to say. You remember what he said? He said, the Most High still rules over the lives of men. And he still does today. And I think more and more we've forgotten all about that. So, tomorrow now, in different places, people will celebrate Memorial Day. That's a day we remember those who have given their all, you know, so that we might be free. And this is good, this, you know, we should celebrate. But I think what we need to do is stop and remember. 
I was looking at an old photo album uh, of mine. I have a whole stack of them. I, you know, sometimes I just look at them and see, kind of remind me of what it was back then. But I was looking at this. This was out of East Texas, and it brought back so many memories. My goodness, you know, all the piney woods and the good fishing and the hunting and everything. You know, it was great. Then I happened to pick up one, only about a half a dozen pictures in it of Korea. And that wasn't so great. Mm -hmm. That wasn't so bad. But this morning, I want us to remember. I want us to remember something. I want us to remember the Lord Jesus Christ, who truly paid it all that you and I might be free and be free forevermore. I want us this morning to look at four precious memories of Jesus. The first one you find in Matthew chapter 5 is Christ on the mountain. Now you remember in that passage of scripture, Jesus is seated on the rim of the mountain. He's teaching his disciples. He's teaching them about the kingdom of God. He's teaching them how to live as ideal citizens of the land. Uh, he, how to love one another, how to pray for one another, how to be happy, how to witness. You know, he told his disciples this, you are the light of the world. Boy, I tell you, I think our light's growing dim. Something is happening. People are not letting their lights shine like it should. Christians are to be out there in the forefront of things that are taking place, but we've perhaps put our lights under a bushel. He's also said that we're to be the salt of the earth. You know salt sweetens things? A Christian can sweeten the community where they live, the street in which you live, whatever it is. I think, you know, we should remember this day, the Lord Jesus Christ and his Sermon on the Mount. It's so important. It's so important that we understand and follow the teachings of the Lord Jesus Christ. Today, I'm telling you, you can hear everything else under the sun except the teachings of Jesus. And a lot of it comes from different churches too. Second thing I think we need to remember is the Lord Jesus Christ on the ship. You remember the story there, don't you, found in Matthew chapter 8? The storm had come. The disciples were so afraid. But, oh, listen to me. How we need to remember this portrait of Jesus today. The storms of life was raging. The disciples were afraid. Christ stands and he rebukes the wind and the waves and commands them to be still. And everything is come good. I want to say to you this morning, my dear friends, the storms of life will come. If they haven't already hit you, they will. Somewhere along the way. But I want you to remember this, that the Lord Jesus Christ is still in control. I was just listening to the news uh, over there in Nepal. Uh, they've been hit by two Earthquakes, massive earthquakes, so just within a week's time almost. You know, I, and then they were telling about how you can send money here and you can do this and you can do that, but everything. Out of the whole thing, I never heard one word about God. Oh, how we need to take God to those people and share the Lord Jesus Christ with, it, with people today. That's what this world needs. They need Jesus. You know, we should never, never. I, I, my prayer is, my prayer is that in that disaster, that somehow or another, they will see God Amen. and turn to Him because that is what they need more than the help that we will give, perhaps. The third thing we need to remember, of course, is Jesus Christ in the in Bethany. That was the home of Mary, Martha, and Lazarus. You know something? Jesus loved to go to the home of Mary, Martha, and Lazarus. He loved to go there. 
you know what? He was always welcome there. Oh, I might, well, I won't ask you, you don't put up your hand or anything, but <laughs> if he came to your home, say, at one o'clock today, would you welcome him? Or would you turn him away? Hmm. You know, he was always welcome there. They treated him like an honored guest. They were a blessing to him, and he was a blessing to them. <laughs> oh, boy, I tell you. He came in the time of fun, and then the time of sorrow, and also in the time of death. He still will. You know, we should never, never, never forget this. We need to treasure this, this portrait of the Lord Jesus Christ. First of all, because it reminds me, at least, that death is a defeated foe. A lot of people, they are so afraid of death. So afraid of death. I want to tell you, death has been defeated. Amen. The Lord Jesus Christ did that on Calvary's cross. And if you're going through troubles and sorrows and what have you right now, listen to me. He can calm the wind waves. And He can bring peace into your heart and into your life. You know, I think about, I think about homes today. Revelation 2, where it said, Jesus stands at the door and he knocks. Now all you have to do is open the door, let him come in. But I wonder, I wonder how many homes today would open up the door and say, Lord Jesus, come in. We're going to fix you a meal. Go give you some Dr. Pepper or whatever. <laughs> He probably doesn't drink that. <laughs> but anyway, you know. Would you welcome him? Uh, I pray that you would. I pray that you'd say, come in, Lord Jesus, and do it. But of course, the fourth thing we want to see and we want to remember is Christ on the cross. Now, next Sunday morning, we will observe the Lord's Supper. And 1 Corinthians chapter 11, verses 24, 25, 26, 27, all of those we'll use perhaps, but we need to remember those. We need to remember the Lord Jesus Christ on the cross of Calvary. Of all the pictures, this is the one that we need to turn to most often. He said that when you partake of the Lord's Supper, you do it in remembrance of Him. We're to remember Him. Now tomorrow, I'm sure many of you will go from here and you'll go to some uh, something another they'll have where they'll honor the veterans or those who have died or what have you. It, it, I don't know where you know this or not, but here in our community, I think about four, well, that takes in Wild Mama and all around here, you know, but about 400 veterans have died in this last year. Gone out to meet the maker. I pray that they, I listen, I pray that they know the Lord Jesus Christ. Amen. There was a time, by the way, back in World War II and sometime after that, that people thought, now, this is something that, a lot of people thought that if you died in the military, you'd go into heaven. I want to tell you this morning, my dear friends, in the military, wherever it is, that won't get you to heaven. That's not it. The only way you'll ever get to heaven is by trusting the Lord Jesus Christ as your personal Savior. You know, someone, we had the Gideon speaker here last week, wasn't it? Someone indicated, you know, if you were a Gideon, that would get you him. What? The moose, the Gideons, or whatever it might be, that won't get you into heaven. The only thing that will get you into heaven is by trusting the Lord Jesus Christ as your Lord and as your Savior. Boy, we need to remember that, you know. We need to remember. Yeah. We need to remember those who have given their lives for their country. Yeah. But let's remember, let's remember the one who gave his life on the cross for your sins and my sins. 
And I tell you something, if you accept him, you'll be free. You'll be not only be free now, you'll be free forevermore. Think of all the sins that you've committed <laughs> and how God has forgiven you. I tell you, that makes me want to shout. Somebody said, why well, you're the preacher and you're the best old boys ever been. Don't you get off on that. I want to tell you I've done some things I should don't, don't even want to remember. <clears throat> but I do remember this, praise God. When Jesus died on Calvary's cross, He died for my sins and He forgave me of my sin. And I don't have to worry about that anymore. <laughs> oh, you know. Here's the thing about it. Remember this. Remember, if there's sin in your life, whatever it might be, you need to confess it. And He will wash it away. Wash your sin away. And you'll be white as snow. Isn't that wonderful? Huh? Well, I know all of you now you ever sin. Only me. But hey. <laughs> He'll do it. He'll wash it. Why is that? These are some things I hope that you'll remember tomorrow. You may get out and salute the flag. Oh, that's wonderful. That's great. And I know several of you have served in the military and all. And that's wonderful. Great. But remember this. Remember the Lord Jesus Christ on the mountain. When he's teaching his disciples about how to live and what to do. Remember that. Remember that. Remember him on the ship? Because I'm going to say to you, if it hasn't already happened yet, storms will come into your life. The older you get, the faster they come. I mean, it seems they will. But they're there. But remember what Jesus said? I'll never leave you, nor forsake you. He's going to be there. He'll be there with you all the way. Remember Christ in the home and the death of Lazarus, the brother of Mary and Martha. One day death's coming. It'll come. A lot of people, th I think a lot of people think they're going to skip it some way. <laughs> you know, you'll miss it. No, it'll come. My question this morning is you prepared for it. And you know what? We don't know when it'll happen. Maybe be tomorrow. Maybe this afternoon. The question is, are you ready? Uh, but remember that whole story now, will you? Death came to that home. Lazarus died. And the Lord Jesus Christ came and Lazarus got up and walked out of the grave. Amen. Oh, my friends, remember that. You may die, but one day, one day, you'll be walking with Jesus in glory. <laughs> if you're a child of God and you die, I won't tell you, you go immediately to be with the Lord. Yeah, you, you'll be up in heaven. You'll be with him. Remember that. Christ defeated death on the cross. But it'll come unless the Lord Jesus Christ returns. And that's my prayer that he will return and return quickly. Amen. Listen, Jesus, he loves you. He died for you. He won't, by the way, you hear me? A lot of people don't understand this, maybe. I don't. But you know what Christ wants for you? He wants you to have an abundant life now. He wants you to have a good life now. Why is it that so many Christians today are so, oh, I mean, they're afraid of everything? You know, the government's going to go kaplunk. So what? Let her go. You know, money's going to run out, all those things. So what? I'm putting my trust in the Lord Jesus Christ because He's the one that's in control of it all. So today, 
And if you've never given your heart to Jesus, listen, please, please, please do not turn him away. Oh, he'll save you. He wants to. The Holy Spirit is speaking to you. And when he saves you, you know what? These wonderful portraits of the Lord Jesus Christ that we talk about will always be in your memory. You'll remember those things. Someone say, you know, someone asked me a couple of weeks ago, said, how do you, how are you saved? <laughs> I said, well, all you have to do is confess and believe. Is that hard to do? The guy didn't really answer me. He said, no, I don't think so. You know, then he walked off. Romans 10, 9 says, if thou wilt confess to thy mouth the Lord Jesus Christ and believe in thine heart that God raised him from the dead, you will be saved. That's all you have to do. Confess, believe. Will you do that this morning? Christian, listen to me. You really remember what Christ did for you. Do you remember that he died for you? He washed away your sins. What are you doing for him? Are you living for him? Serving him? I pray that you let us go to the Lord in prayer. Father, we thank you and we praise you because you've been so wonderful and so good to us. And Father, this morning as I remember those things, I remember first of all, when you came into my heart and my life, saved my soul. Oh, what a glorious day. Thank you, Lord Jesus. But I remember your teachings found in your wonderful, precious word. I remember how you come into my life and home when there was heartaches and heartbreaks and death and all those things. But most of all, most of all, I remember how you died on Calvary's cross to save my sin and to save the sins of those who will only trust and believe, confess their sins and believe. And I pray that the first one here this morning who has never accepted you, that right now they'll just simply confess their sins and believe and they can be saved. Forgive us, Father, where we failed you. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen.